I, I still respect pretty much everyone. Like I, I don't think anything of it. But if if they think I shouldn't have won, they can kiss my ass. <laughs>
going to the American, winning both events, never happened before. But there was, and I don't think the rodeo world seen it and me still being somewhat involved. And I know you'll talk about it because everybody I talked to said, he don't give a shit. He's just riding them, whether they pay him or not. You know, it doesn't matter. But after you rode, and it was a group text, I think one of your brothers responded back to it. And and I love that the family defending you on that. What was going on with that that group text? Um, I'm, I mean, that, that seems to happen after every single rodeo. It doesn't matter. So right. I've become pretty immune to it, but it kind of blew up to where it was it got pretty personal to everyone and like i just go out there just like everybody else and i got zero control of what somebody scored me so for me to see that other competitors were kind of trying to knock me down really pissed me off to where i did get defensive over a few things just because they know just as well as i do like i i just did my job and yeah i mean I, I still respect pretty much everyone. Like I, I don't think anything of it. But if if they think I shouldn't have won, they can kiss my ass. <laughs> That's what I love about you, man. You, and and you have to think that way. You know, you have to think that way. You go out and do your job. It's a judged event. The judge may have seen something, liked something, didn't like something on the other ride, and. and you know, and I think we do see that at time to time. We do see guys get maybe loaded and like, oh, I didn't quite see that, but it's not like it's it's just happening every time you're going out there busting your ass doing your job and what a lot of but and i shouldn't say contestants because i don't know anything about rough stock but a lot of the fans don't understand and i see it on social media oh blue shirt wins again well that's bullshit because the blue shirt did his job and he and he you or your family or anybody really can make those horses or those bulls that much better by the way you ride them yeah and i mean when there's seven of us making the exact same ride, like the the chances of one of us winning are higher than when there's only one guy. So it's, I mean, it it does look like the rides win everywhere. Because they it, do. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I I think it should be that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think right. they do win everywhere. Well, and, and if you go, if you don't go to the rodeo thinking that, you might as well keep your ass at home. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I know for me watching you guys as a family and, and one unit, I think that's freaking awesome that you guys stay that course and you're always there rooting, pulling for each other. And, and that's something that rodeo has always had, but to see the, and I like to hear them say the blue shirts, I think that's freaking badass. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have, um, with, with coming up, I know your endorsements and stuff. I'm going to skip, I'm going to skip ahead to something else actually, before we talk about that. PBR teams, you make a considerable amount of money with your competing and sponsorships. Is PBR team something you're considering? Because I know that's been a question for a lot of people. Um, dang for sure not this year. I mean, for the past two years now, I've talked to him about it, but growing up playing sports and stuff, like when I played sports, I, I didn't rodeo, like I, my dad made me stay dedicated to the team and or right. whatever I was doing. So to me, I, I feel like it would be wrong to give myself 50% in the PRCA and give the PBR 50%. And I, I told him that I'm not going to do it unless I feel like I can benef benefit them as long as with me. And so I'm going to sit this year out and just watch. <laughs> well, it last year was pretty, pretty awesome. This year, it sounds like it's going to be even better. And I mean, really, you might be coming in if, if you decide to do it later on at, at the perfect time. And what you're doing in the PRCA, I, I could understand why it doesn't make sense for you to, to go over there. And I think a lot of people can. I mean, what, in five years, you've won almost over, well, you have won over two and a half million dollars, um, which is just hard for me to even imagine because it took me 20 years to win two million. And, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it just, it makes sense for you to stay where you're at for right now. Yeah, and I mean, shoot, the P, I've always wanted to go to the PBR just because I've always loved bull riding, but I really love riding bucking horses, and it's hard for me to slow down on any of them. And, well, and I think if you quit riding bucking horses, you might get uh, kicked out of the right family. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know if I can ride bulls without getting on a bucket of his first. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to get that adrenaline going. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh man, that's that's good. What about JB Mooney? I know you spent some time with him this winter. Uh, had you got to be around, hang around JB much? I know it's somebody you looked up to as a kid. Yeah, I've I've always looked up to him. I mean, he keeps bull riding pretty basic, which that's pretty much how my dad taught me how to ride bulls was keeping it basic and i mean of course he was just a bronc rider so i thought growing up being young that he was just dumb and didn't understand bull riding <laughs> but it seems like the the older i get the more i missed out on a lot of good talks my dad gave me and J jb says like the same stuff like he keeps it simple and so getting right hang around him was really cool we bucked a lot of bulls and I mean, it, it, it's pretty awesome to be around somebody you looked up to your whole life. Well, JB will tell you how it is. If you screw up, he's going to say, listen, you screwed up here, fix it. Yeah, he, he told me that in American in the first round. He he told me I let one get away, so I tried to come back in the short round. Hump up, and well, I guess it worked, that little pep talk of JB saying you let one get away. What about Dale? I seen you, hit, you guys, you went on this podcast, and Dale is somebody that has just been amazing for the sport of rodeo and the Western way of life. Yeah, he's been really cool. He's, he's been one of our close friends since 2016. So, I mean, getting to hang around him, it's always fun. I, I mean, mostly joking around all the time, but it's still fun. He talked me into getting on a bareback horse, so <laughs> it's has he given Has he given you any point? Because I know he's the greatest bull, bull rider ever, this year especially. Uh, do you get any pointers from, from Dale Brisby on your bull riding? I get a few, but usually at the end of the sentence, it's always, um, I'm, I'll always be the second best, so. <laughs> right, right. And then if you guys are friends, you guys are like that, and he's on top, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he's always on top. <laughs> Which is weird, but anyway, as long as he's happy with where he's at in the, <laughs> yeah. in the situation. What do you got planned coming up? Uh, I know you just caught uh, one Clovis, 90 and a half. In the bull riding, I, don't, I didn't see your name in the results in the bronc ride. Must not have had a very good horse, so they didn't give you enough points. Yeah, they, I, they didn't give me my five points for my dad being Cody and then yeah. my ten for being the blue shirt. I, I didn't earn those this week for some reason. It's kind of weird, but I was one out of the money. I just had a nice little horse. What about in the bull ride? Ninety and a half. I don't. That was uh, that's was nine thousand dollar payday there at Clovis. Yeah, there's big payday so it made up for del rio <laughs> oh yeah del rio i did see that you did again you didn't get those five and a half or five points that you should have man I, we need to have to talk to with these judges maybe i'll get them on the show and i'll try to line them out uh, so they yeah. know how they're supposed to judge yeah i i forget to tell them everywhere i go that i'm i'm supposed to get those <laughs> <laughs> well you shouldn't have to tell them anymore stetson for shit sakes I mean, all they got to do is look in the on the journal, or we don't even get journals anymore. I don't know why I said that. That was back <laughs> when I wrote you on that website. Uh, <laughs> you know, look on there and see your name. And speaking of that, I have this. I mean, you guys. Oh yeah, this is. I keep this in my office everywhere I go. <laughs> see, yeah. they need to realize it's death in the world. world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And a blue shirt. I mean, this is. These guys, they need to they need to get their shit together. So uh, we have more to talk about. That's for dang sure. Traveling partners, who you got with you right now? I got Kai Hamilton with me. He's in the back, recovering from Clovis. You got a head stomp, Clovis? Yeah, the horn hit him coming off, and then his back feet clipped his head when he hit the ground. Well, and I know this was discussed. Uh, uh, I mean, it was a topic of discussion a few months ago when he started hanging out with JB. JB told him to throw that helmet in the trash, and he went what eight for eight or ten for ten. He any rate, he rode a lot of bulls in a row, and everybody's like, "Yeah, that's great, but you're going to get your head stepped on eventually in this event." Yeah, um, I mean, for the first long period of time, I I didn't. I've had a hard time saying anything to him because he's been clearly kicking my ass. So, like, <laughs> it's hard for me to have any ground to stand on when he's winning everywhere. And, but I wish he'd put a freaking helmet back on. Which is funny because back, what, I, it, when did helmets become something that it was, you know, what, 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, I think so. You know, and they've they've changed so much. Like the helmet you wear, 
it, it's pretty light, right? I mean, protective, but light, and you don't get your head slinging around? Yeah, it, it's really light. I mean, I've tried all the heavy ones, the light ones, so the light ones are good. I mean, if I take a, even a small blow to the head, I usually just get a new helmet. What do those helmets retail for? I mean, obviously you get your stuff for free because you're Stetson right, but. Well, my helmets, um, it's a hockey helmet, so I do pay for that. So I'm in probably each helmet is 500 bucks, which I mean. It's well worth it's it. Keep your cheapest head. insurance ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, no joke. Yeah. Um, keep your head for 500 bucks or lay in the back of camper like Kai with a, what is probably swelled up a little bit. I <laughs> Yeah, he's got a goose egg bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're not making fun of you, Kai. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're, we're, making yeah we're making fun of him. We're making fun of him for sure. But do you guys make fun of his accent? Because for those of you who don't know, Kai Hamilton, number one in the world, which I'm looking at the standings now, he is kicking your ass. Yeah, he, he is. 107,000. You are what, roughly 20, 23,000 behind him, just in case you're doing the math in your head. But you got 9,000 on him at Clovis. Yeah. Oh, you're catching up, catching up. But anyway, do you make fun of him for being Australian? Does he say some silly ass words? Oh, he says a lot of he's, batteries. He calls them batteries. And I mean, there's just a million different things that he says that's weird. And he always tells me I says it different than you. He says, says it different? <laughs> yeah, I says it different. <laughs> what about aluminum? Does he ever say aluminum? Ah, I'd have to get him to say that. I haven't heard him say that before. So when you ask him, I bet he says aluminum. Yeah, huh. I traveled with a couple different Australians and they'd be talking and like, hey, we need to uh, we need to wa uh, wash the windscreen. I'm like, a windscreen? What the hell is a windscreen? He's like, you, the windscreen in front of that we look through. I'm like, that's a windshield. If it was a screen, wind would be hitting us in the face. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. they got some silly stuff that they that they say. Um, what's next on the schedule? Where are you headed? Where are you going? What are you uh, where are you going to win next? I guess. Uh, Uvalde, Texas, and then for the Extreme Bulls, and then go to Guyman. I I got drawn out of Guyman in the bull riding. You got wait then, a second. What you got drawn out of Guyman? Oh, did you enter for a perf or out or something? Yeah, Sunday or out. But then they called me back the other day, and I got back in. So, so with that happened, I guess somebody got up Sunday and they doctors released or drew out. Is that correct? Yep. And then yep. do you do you get that bull that they had drawn? Or ha I guess they haven't even drawn him yet, have they? Yeah, they hadn't drawn him, which was good. Because usually when you get called back for well, after they do the stock, it's usually because the stock wasn't very good. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. But more, I mean, I guess in the bull riding, does that have an effect in the bull riding? I think it would play more of an effect in the, in the bronc riding. Yeah, bull riding, it's usually, it's hard not to draw a good one. They're all pretty good. It's easy to find bulls. Bucking horses, when somebody turns out, you almost want to decline the call and be like, nah, no thanks. But I mean, I've won more on horses that I wasn't supposed to than I was on the ones that I am supposed to win on. Well, and we talked about that earlier. When you do your job, it helps the horse. And and so a lot of people don't know this, but I judged um, some rodeos back in 05. How old were you in 05? Five. Five. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, back in 05, I got hurt, judged some rodeos. And I didn't really know crap about it. I got to judge with a, a couple good judges and learn a lot. But watching a guy that, in, I'm talking about the bareback, right? He's just most obvious for me, that would sit up there, lift on his rig, and get a hold with his feet and help that horse pick him up. And it really helped show that horse off. And then that horse came back in the, I seen that horse again, and somebody just flopped around like a dead fish on his back. And that horse just ran off across the pin. I think I marked the horse at 21 the first time I marked him, and the next time, seriously at an 11 and uh, that guy goes why'd you mark him that much that time and this much this time I said well because that guy helped him and got him to buck going back to your point of you riding you winning on horses that you're not supposed to because you're lifting on your rein you're getting a hole with your feet you're picking their front end up and this is all technical stuff for bronc riding that you do perfectly yeah I mean that's that's something we all learned from my dad because he, he's I mean in my opinion the greatest bronc rider that there's ever been and he's one on any kind of horse there is even if it was supposed to suck like he always found a way to make something buck better i mean i don't know how he did it exactly because he didn't have blue shirts and stuff but <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's if he'd have had a blue shirt 
he would probably still be riding and you guys would have a lot less gold buckles. I mean, really. That's a good point. And he always threatens that he's going to come back and show us how it's done. <laughs> well, he damn near did at the American. What was that? Three years ago? In 2019. Yeah. 19. And if I'm remembering the ride right, he just got, would he get loosened up right at the end and, and like through the flag because we thought he covered him and they end up saying he bucked off. Is that right? Yep. 7.98 when they reviewed it and it had it have been eight seconds i think he would have i mean honestly the ride he started and about finished right there was was probably going to win first yeah he would have won a uh, that would have been nice to win a million dollars <laughs> but not only that that i think that money counted to the prca that year it would have probably allowed him to make the national finals again yeah but i wish i wish he would have ifs and buts you know ifs and buts well, they say if ifs and buts for candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I just don't like candies or nuts that or nuts that much. Anyway, Statler, younger brother, man, I just I keep looking through the the results. Kid's impressive. I mean, obviously he better be if he's coming from your family, but he's not far out from his first national finals, if if not this year. Yeah, I'm I'm really hoping this year. I mean, I, the biggest thing for him, I guess, is believing. I guess that's what it comes down to to everyone is believing how good you are and and just trusting that everything's going to be good because I mean he's a big kid that can really spur something if once he realizes how good he is I think we'll all be in trouble. <laughs> well confidence you know is something you can't teach it's something you you just have to have I mean you you either do or you don't and then you know sometimes you could you could learn it but is is that is he lacking confidence or or what is it he's he's got i would say it is lacking confidence i mean that's because he's more than capable of it like it's just like when he when he goes home to amateur rodeos like he win he wins them all same kind of horses that like we we grew up getting on some of the best horses and it it all comes down to the confidence and that was one thing I struggled with when I first came around. Like, I didn't make the NFR the same year. I guess my rookie year, I made it in the bull ride, but not the bronc ride, and I was lacking confidence bad. But then, I mean, I just started brainwashing myself. I was telling myself that I was the greatest, even when it was so far from being true. And then I started riding better because of it. I, I was lying to myself, but in a good way. Well, you're exact. I used to tell myself the same thing, I, and I would mutter it under my breath. I'm a winner, I'm the best. And that's, I would tell myself, but that riding into the box, as at the national, it, it didn't matter if it was my first national finals or my last one. I would, in under my breath, I'd tell myself, I'm a winner, I'm the best, I'm a winner, I'm the best. And I would just keep repeating that. And you have to, you, and it's not lying to yourself, but you have to convince yourself that you, that is what you are if you want to succeed, especially in this business. Yeah, and I mean, my dad's always said, like, your mind can only focus on one thing. So anytime a bad thought comes into your head, and that happens a lot to me still, like I'll be crawling in the chute, like like thinking like I'm not ready. And then I'm like, no, you're like you said, you're the best. <laughs> and like, I'll, I'll just keep letting those thoughts run through my head. And then the other ones are gone. And nine times out of 10, it goes pretty dang good. Yeah, when the winners, the, the people that are truly, truly successful, they don't have to say those things out loud. They have yeah. to say it to themselves and then prove it out there. And, and I think that's what I, I admire about you so much is you don't you don't ever say, you don't talk about how good you are, or how great, you know, things are going. You just you just go and show it and you're, you're your same level-headed self outside the arena. And, and I think that's something a lot of these kids can look up to and learn from. Yeah, I mean, I, I learned that from my dad. I, and you'd know better than anyone, like he was man of few, <laughs> few words and like he, he didn't talk and he just went out there every single time and i mean i'm i'm dang for sure a way more energetic person when i get off than my dad like i never seen him get excited one time he got off went right to the side of the arena walked back to the shoots and you'd never see him get excited or and it was the same whether he got bucked off or whether he was 94 i mean it didn't matter yeah literally and I, that's still him. That that's dang for sure not me. I I really love getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, it was funny you said he's a man of few words, and and I was thinking about the Hall of Fame, you know, and the speeches we got to give. I, I'm curious to see how much Cody can get out. 
I know for me, I started writing the list. I go to the gym every morning. And I know you're not going to believe this, but I'm in almost bronc riding shape. I'm down to about 230 pounds, maybe a little too big. But anyway, I'd sit on the elliptical bike and I'd go through my phone and write a speech. And they said, well, you want to try to keep it under five minutes. And uh, I started reading it. I wasn't even anywhere, anywhere close. I was way further. But maybe Cody will be a few words, and I'll get to take up some of his up some of his minutes. When he was getting inducted in the Utah Hall of Fame, everybody that was before him, and he was last, they um, they all kind of had long speeches. So he says, "Since you guys all went over your time, that means I can cut mine short." <laughs> and, and his was pretty short, but it, it was pretty funny to listen to. <laughs> Oh man, I could I could imagine. I, and again, looking forward to that. I and I'm assuming or imagining you guys are going to try to make it to be there. But I know there's a pretty hectic schedule. I'm I'm supposed to be at Calgary commentating the rodeo, and they're going to let me off for a couple of days. And you guys don't go up to Calgary though, do you? Um, we will this year. I guess we don't have to have all that stuff. Oh, the COVID uh, passports and shots and records and yeah, all that stuff. I got. Yeah, that's right. So you're going to head up there this year then? Yep. I I finally get a ride there. Is this your first time? Well, I won the steer riding back in 13. <laughs> so I've rode there, but not not where I want it. Okay. Did you have a blue shirt on when you won the steer riding? I don't think so. Oh, wow. Wow. What? Is, so this is a question that gets asked, and, and I think I knew the answer, so I said it. But the blue shirts, that was just a Wrangler sponsorship where you guys – that was just kind of the color you guys picked out and, and just rolled with it? Actually, um, Billy Etbauer was sponsored by Express. And he always wore blue, so it's it comes from Express, and they like blue, which that's fine because we all, that's I think that's every one of our favorite colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it shows well when the judges score you too. I mean, golly, that, it just works. And Billy Etbauer, I guess, you know, he wore a blue shirt, so we can all go all the way back to blaming on him is why blue shirts get marked higher. Yeah, we, we should blame him. It, it's Billy's fault. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But here's here's the deal. If those cow other cowboys are so worried about it, what's holding them back to go get in a blue shirt? Well, that's what I told. I was joking around with my dad. I said, I should just put on black shirt one time, ride with it. He said, <laughs> or he said, if them other guys were smart enough, they'd put on a blue shirt. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. So first time at Calgary riding, this money counts, or half of it counts to the world standings. The year you're having is, you know, obviously in, in both events and in the all around is, is gonna be amazing. But I wanna go back, you guys are gonna have a busy schedule. You're gonna try to be there for your dad's Hall of Fame induction, I'd imagine, but at the same time, he's rodeoed. He knows you may or may not be able to be there. Yeah, well, he, he's got full control whether we're going to be there because he actually enters all of us. So oh. <laughs> we'll see we'll see how bad he wants us to be there. So not only has he done Brian Bronx, but he's still entering you guys. He's always entered us. I mean, it he makes our life easy. I mean, from oh, yeah. giving us the bonuses in the arena to, to entering us, letting us sleep longer in the day. Oh man, that's pretty sweet. It's like you, he's your, it's like I'm not gonna call him this to his face, but he's your secretary. Literally. He he takes care of all the entering. My mom takes care of making sure we get up on time to go to fl get to flights and I mean we we have it pretty easy. <laughs> uh, so how's it work? You're you're enter or in the truck with Kai, but in the Bronc riding you can't cross event buddy or can you cross event buddy or how's that work? Because Time events are way different. Well, in 19 and 20, when I was rodeoing with Ryder, I always cross event. Like we always, they never split me up. Like it was, seemed like it, everything was going good. And then ever since I've got in the truck with Kai, like I, I don't get into as many rodeos and they split me up all the time. Like last year I went to 60 or 65 rodeos and normally I try to get to 90 to a hundred, but they, I cannot get into anything or they split me up and I have to draw out and it's just, it's just a mess. So you went, you went to damn near 30 less rodeos last year. Yep. What did that look like for your winning percentage? I mean, I, I guess it made me, made it look like I won <laughs> everywhere I went, but <laughs> well, you did, but, and, and I was telling my dad, I'm like, if I would have got into more rodeos, I think I could have actually broke the million dollar mark in one year. and. 
He was like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm like, okay. I'm <laughs> I can see Cody. Yeah, you know, don't worry about it. So you and OK still going to the million dollar mark. It wasn't very many dollars that you missed it by. Yeah, I mean, I think the worst thing they can do at the NFR is walk up to you and tell you that you've clinched a world title before it's over. Because you're like the the high drops and I was getting on my 10th round bull and they'd already been like, yeah, he won it, which I kind of knew, but right. I like I like the fact that I didn't know for sure. Right. And they told me and I, it's like I had zero left in the tank and I let a bull buck me off that. Shouldn't have, I, right. I could have rode with the opposite hand. Right. And that would have that would have clinched you over a million dollars for one year. Yeah. Well, that's <clears throat> poor you. You didn't quite get a million. <laughs> well, I mean, it, there's no doubt um, you're going to be right there in the Hall of Fame with your dad because of what you've done at such a young age and what you're going to continue to do. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if you didn't go and win, you know, PBR World Championship and win another million dollars. Stetson, it's been it has been a true honor to have you on the show. It's been an honor to watch your career. It's an honor to rodeo with your dad and and just to get to see all that, man. Um, we're going to have to do this again because there's so many more things I want to talk to you about. But uh, good luck for the rest of the year and and looking forward to watching. Thanks, Luke. I appreciate it. Congra congratulations to you, too. I appreciate it. Make sure you ask Kai about aluminum, windscreen, bonnet. Ask him what a bonnet is. I mean, there's so many of these crazy words that don't even make sense. you know. And the worst part is they speak English, too. It's not the right English. Yeah, that's... It's foreign for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Be careful and good luck to you. All right. Thanks, Luke. You bet. Have a good one. Kai's in the camp for sleep, and he, he got his head stepped on yesterday, so he doesn't feel that good. <laughs> oh, he should eliminate that. Does he? Well, he took his helmet off, right? Yeah, he's dumb. <laughs>